Welcome to Chapter 10 Geocoding by Mary Beth Price. In this chapter, we're going to cover what is geocoding. Geocoding is similar to an attribute join of a standalone table to an attribute table of a spatial data set, except we can use multiple fields to match records and if the records aren't identical they can be similar and it'll work and we call the spatial data set is called a reference layer some reasons for using geocoding 911 emergency response uh, MapQuest and Google Earth finding locations of customers which would include a list of customers we will actually geocode a list of bars in our lab marketing analysis mapping distribution of crimes if you have a list of crime addresses versus a an, an XY Latin long of the location of the crimes and then mapping township and range descriptions in this example we have a list of restaurants and their addresses and the reference layer shown at the bottom is how the addresses get matched each address in the table in the table is matched to a location on a particular street and it creates a point layer of addresses so it's a, essentially it's an easy way to get a list of addresses into ArcGIS Here we have a parcel reference layer and we're matching addresses to polygons as opposed to a a street address layer. We'll be using a street system so it'll be um, points to the the streets layer will be the reference. Fuzzy matching joins and queries are based on a exact matches whereas geocoding is matching records that are close but not identical as I said early in an earlier slide in this case we have an address of 525 Mount Rushmore Road and the items on the right could be used to match that address so it, what we're showing here is it doesn't have to be specific moving on using geocode to join because geocoding relies on scoring candidates rather than exact matching it can be used for joining tables lacking a single common field we don't actually use this concept in our course but it could be used what you do need is a reference layer an address locator and a table those are the most important aspects and believe it or not that is a definite quiz question addresses can be matched are parsed into separate components such as name street name etc each component is compared to the same fields in the reference layer and they're giving it a, a score of 0 to 100 we'll be looking for around an 80 to 100 percent match these are some address components which is <laughs> an exact question out of the review questions that you'll be doing this week the prefix direction is east prefix type is the highway a number of course street name street type the direction and the city state and zip code are op optional how are they parsed notice that parsing includes converting to uppercase we take 125 Maple Road, the number gets put in, the street gets put in, and the suffix. With different information, such as the second line, the suffix direction is included because it is included in the initial address. A good thing is, a lot of this is done in Arc Forest. We don't have to worry about this too much once we get it set up the way we like. Here we have a reference layer of point line or polygon features with attributes on which matching will be based. We will be using a line layer. Placing addresses, there's an offset, and that's what this um, 
graphic is showing and then it goes from for example 700 to 799 750 would be right in the middle so if we know that this line segment starts at 700 and goes to 799 750 would in the middle be in the middle 725 would be in the middle here and that's how it works that's how ArcGIS places the addresses geocoding styles this can get a little bit unnerving just know that we'll be using one in our course and that's what we're sticking with if you'd like to venture out that's where you can venture out and learn different ones on your own these are the multitude of the of our options we'll actually use one of these and just be aware that they're also changing as new software comes out for example sp3 is a lot different than sp2 or sp1 which is also different than sp4 and sp5 hence the reason we're all using the same software this is going to go through and tell you or show you the different features of each of them and I'm going to run through these very quickly US street style locates a street address on both sides of the street using a line reference layer requires an address link ranges on both left and right sides of the street in this case the odds are on the southern side the evens are on the north side if in fact this is north and south this is US 1 range it's similar to US streets but does not consider left or right sides we will not be using anywhere near that one address matches a single field to a single point or polygon of course we're not using that city state style matches two fields containing a city name and a state name or abbreviation and then in that case you must match to the points or the polygons PLSS coding this is coding to the PLS land system we're not using this and this is another this could be another whole course PLSS and definitely another class or another lecture day for sure especially if you're not from the Pacific Northwest where this is used I came from upstate New York where this is system is not used it was very foreign to me at first once you learn it it's easy to understand but again it's for another day and we won't be using it I'm gonna breeze right through it these are uh, TSR coding it's another example of something we're not going to use and now let's talk about what it looks like in GIS setting up an address locator you will do this in the lab I'll help you I'll provide some information but you'll be required to know some of this information we'll choose a style of locator that I'll provide you'll provide the name and location of the reference data well we may actually create our own reference data you decide which attribute fields are used for matching and we'll set some settings locators store a snapshot of the reference data they can be moved from folder to folder and you don't need to copy the reference data with it if you have edit the reference data you must recreate the locator we'll just create our locator and hopefully just use it once we hopefully won't have to go back and redo things if you set it up right the first time and use it correctly you'll only do it once when you get to your own project you may want to tweak the address locators and create new ones a lot of people do their when they do their project this is how they get um, data primary data into their ArcGIS project ArcGIS online now has seven, several public domain locators they may not be as accurate as local ones but it provides easy access to large areas here's an example below we do not touch on those but if you'd like to use them in your project that may be an option here we have setting up an address locator in this case somebody right clicked on the geo database we're not using them but that's how you could do it then they went to new and they created an address locator 
In the address locator, you would select the style, you indicate the reference layer, and then you can observe the matching field, the field names and the alias names, and then you tell it where to put the address locator using the browse button right there. Some of the options. We can have connectors. We do spelling minimum candidate score and match score. There are alternate and alias tables. I will provide most of this for you, um, but you could look further into the side and the end offset. And again, you can change these during the geocoding session. Hopefully, you've got it set it up set up properly the first time. The actual process. These are the steps. Add the address locator that you created, choose an address table, and set up the session. Match the addresses in batch mode, and then we'll review the matched and unmatched addresses. It doesn't work perfectly, and we have to go act go back in and interactively rematch some addresses. We change the geocoding options to facilitate the matching, and then again we rematch the addresses in batch or interactive mode. We'll use interactive. Here's another example. You choose the service and you set up the session. You will see all of these windows as we're going through Lab 5. Rematch. This is where you can go back in and redo some of your match. In this case 77 matched, 1 tied, and 10 were unmatched. We should have about 8 or 9 unmatched and you will go back in and match them interactively and it'll take a little bit of sleuthing to use a term from Matt when he taught this process because it's not as straightforward as one would like. Here's an interactive rematch. You will see this window. It tells you that these are um, matched. For example, status matched, matched, unmatched, unmatched. And up here, you can't see it because this thing is in the way. Well, maybe I can move it, make this a little bit better. There we go. Instead of all addresses, you could change this to unmatched. And then just the use would show up. You would look at the information and make modifications and then search to see if your mo mini modifications helped come up with a better score and hopefully you'll see things like 100% 99 etc come up when you try to interactively rematch your unmatched that being the orange addresses and again we'll do this in class in the lab Looking for hand candidates, select the row to hunt for candidates. So you, we'll do one at a time. You can edit problems. Let me move this so you can see the other options. And then the search. And once you find one that works, you click match. And it disappears once you press refresh from the list. And we go from 10 to 9. Adjust geocoding options. I've already gone over that matching the best candidate you would close once you're done we would not match on a 70 percent so don't let that fool you a 70 percent match is not good you would have to be very familiar with the area to accept that off that 70 percent figure and this is just an easy finished result showing the new points on the layer And this shows a little bit more rematching, which is irrelevant at this point. And that concludes geocoding. For the PowerPoint presentation, you will learn a lot more by going through the lab and, of course, making some mistakes and go back in and fixing your mistakes. That is part of the learning process.